welcome back to the road to Monteberg for the 12th mission of the campaign, where we're closing in on the first of our two campaign objectives, the village of Laham. The Germans have been falling back towards this place ever since we punched through their lines way back at Hell in the Hedgerows, but now they've run out of room, they've got to the village, they've dug in, and they're making a stand, so they have a bit of time to evacuate their forces over the Murder River. The unfortunate 325th Glider Infantry Regiment are going to be the ones making the final assault. But before that goes in, we're going to be taking easy company of the 505th Parachute Infantry Regiment, backed up by some engineers and 81mm mortar, and our friendly neighbourhood 75mm pack howitzer battery, and we're going to be launching a holding attack. The idea here is to punch forward and put pressure on the German defenders on a different area of the line so that they're pinned in place and they can't send any forces south to reinforce the defence of La Ham when the 325th attack in the next mission. The map here is about 500 by 300 metres. We've got a single company and they're only 35 minutes on the clock, so we have a much smaller scenario here which makes a nice change from the pretty chunky battles we've been playing for a while. There are two objectives. I get 150 points for securing La Cour des Mers and 100 for destroying the enemy. As usual for this campaign, there's another objective that awards points for keeping my casualties below 10% as a kind of bonus. Looking at the terrain, we have what should be a very familiar environment. We're back dealing with a patchwork of small fields boxed in by tall vicarge, mixed up with some clusters of farmhouses and barns. There are a couple of slightly different features though. We also have a couple of tall three-story buildings, one in the middle of the map and the other on the German map edge, but most obviously we have this big open field on the right flank just outside of my setup zone. This immediately sets some warning lights off. It looks a lot like the layout of the map is encouraging me to attack on the left, where I have all this concealment from the hedgerows, and I don't have to cross all of the dangerous open ground on the right. But if we go a little deeper than that, this is so obvious that I'm willing to bet that the defence is concentrated around the objective area on the left, and that if I only attack on that side, I'll effectively be mounting a frontal assault. That's not something I want to do, or at least not something I want to have as plan A. So very early on I'm thinking about a kind of counterintuitive attack across that right-hand field. After all, no one would be so stupid as to run across 200 metres of open ground into a right angle of possible defensive positions. Looking at it in a little more detail, it feels like going right is not as dumb as it looks. I have that battery of four 75mm pack howitzers on call, and they have 40 smoke rounds between them. The wind is blowing gently from the northwest, so if I drop a fairly slow point mission in the right place, I shouldn't have any problems creating a substantial smoke screen that slowly drifts diagonally across the inside of the right angle, masking my troops crossing the field from any enemy positions in the central three-story building and the fields on the left. My airborne infantry have demolition charges, so blasting through the vicarage once they've got across the field shouldn't be too much of a problem. The sticking point will be any resistance on the right flank, because we're back into making a frontal attack, and getting bogged down could be very dangerous. I don't want to hang around in the open field after the smoke is dispersed, that's a recipe for disaster. But on the flip side, given the layout of the map, I'm expecting the bulk of the enemy force to be on the left, so I should be hitting a weak spot. I'm still committed to attacking on the left flank though, I have three platoons, so I can easily send one platoon to each flank and keep one in reserve to be committed as necessary. The briefing does indicate that the enemy has a local reserve that might turn up to reinforce. This is exactly what we want in this situation. We want that reserve here and not intervening in the final the ham assault, but the possibility of a counterattack is something to bear in mind. The first thing that happens when the game starts is that my pixel trip and spot a barbed wire obstacle on the right. This goes almost all the way across the field, leaving a tiny gap on the map edge. This is obviously in my way, but I can blast through it just like I can blast through the vicarage, and it only reinforces my guesswork about the strength of the right flank. I'm guessing there's an obstacle there because it's lightly held. The wire could be a problem if the AI has been set up to defend it effectively though. 
I'm not too worried about any Germans directly across from my setup zone because I have my reserve platoon and the 81mm mortar set up to counter them. I'm more worried about something like a tripod mounted machine gun in the centre behind one of the hedgerows by the road where it's awkward for me to get line of sight onto with my base of fire but the MG can mow down any troops that run up to the wire. It's a kind of combination enfilade defilade position that's a nightmare to deal with. That was, however, exactly what I planned for with the smoke and as that comes in it does a good job of masking my advance across the far right. I'm still moving across in small teams, it's still open ground after all, and what the GIs at the front don't know is that they're mostly there to see if the enemy is watching and if there are any mines complementing the wire. There are a Apparently none of either, and as a bonus I can squeeze around the edge of the wire and blast the hole in the vacage. Here I've made a bit of a mistake with the orders. I either gave my team too short a blast order or failed to give them any follow-up orders because once they've blown their way in, they proceed to stack up on the other side of the vacage in full view. Of course, this kind of mistake never seems to go unpunished and there are some Germans watching. It seems a lot like they would have had a much greater chance of survival if they'd been a little further forward and able to get down in the wheat. The silver lining is that I found an enemy position on this flank and I can get to work on it, but I'm going to have to be quick. I have all these troops out in the open still and that smoke screen isn't going to last forever. Events on the other flank are a bit more conventional. I'm moving an airborne platoon and my attached engineers up here and they make contact with the enemy when they reach the second hedgerow line. The engineers have the slightly simpler task, getting stuck into a firefight with German pixel trucking across a small field, but my infantry on the left have a different proposition. The Bacage layout here is kind of a funnel. With my troops at the short end and the enemy set up along the long end in the objective, it basically means that they can fit more pixel trucking into their firing line than I can. Very quickly becomes obvious that I'm not going to be advancing from this position. This is going to be my base of fire for the attack into the objective on this flank. It'll take time for me to really get online here though. The Germans aren't falling to pieces at the first sign of trouble and I need to bring my mortars up to pace them. The easiest way to unpick the enemy position on the objective is already looking like a hook from the right flank and it takes longer than I would like to get the ball rolling over there. In the end, Although the smoke is dispersed, I'm able to avoid any further casualties. And as usual, it's the 60mm mortar that does the business. By the time I get an assault team up to give the enemy HMG some hand grenades, they're long gone. I'm still moving forward cautiously. This platoon is now out of sight of my reserve at the back, so it's on its own in terms of support. And as time goes on, I'm increasingly aware that I might have to deal with enemy counterattacks. I can get into position to enfilade the first enemy line in the objective easily enough though and a German sniper in a three story building is taken out along with a HQ team. I'm starting to put pressure on across the board now. The mortars are up and pounding the enemy in the objective. I have a squad working its way down the far left towards the barns and my engineers have flushed a squad of Germans out into the open in the centre where they run into their own barbed wire and quickly realise that surrendering is a really good idea. I'd been taking the odd casualty here and there, but it's not anything I wouldn't expect from this kind of strength on strength infantry fight. I've just about run out of room to sensibly advance on the left though. The Bacage line in the middle of the objective has been mortared pretty comprehensively, but I'd rather turn that position than come at it head on, so I'm trying to speed up on the right. Progress here is mostly limited by a wooden machine gun bunker in the corner of this field. I've known about this from the start, its location is even pointed out in the mission briefing, and it so far seemed like a fairly ineffective position. As it turns out, if I want to hook in from the right flank and enfilade the enemy defenders in the objective, I'll have to get troops onto the Bacage line running along the road, right in front of the machine gun in the bunker. So maybe from that perspective it's not actually in that bad a spot, it manages to gun down some of my engineers as they occupy a house in the centre because I've misjudged the line of sight. But with that exception I can easily avoid its field of fire, get into the adjoining field with the bazooka team and give the bunker the good news. In the same turn that the bunker gets taken out, the 75s start coming in again. I didn't want to have them sat there doing nothing after the smoke screen and with it taking so long to call them in, as soon as the company HQ was into position I got to organising a fire mission on the only target they have line of sight to, the 
bunker. And now that that position has been plastered with high explosive shells, I need to pull back a bit on the right to avoid some friendly fire embarrassment. This doesn't seem like that bad of an idea, at least to begin with. Resistance in the objective seems to be fading away, and I have some troops fairly far forward. I have a whole squad up on the far left, and although the scouts I push up to check the hedgerow get a hand grenade for their trouble, they're also able to spot the enemy running away. Granted, there has been a bit of development on the German side. A few turns a PSW-222 drove up the main road and turned onto the left flank. This is a reconnaissance car armed with a 20mm cannon and a coaxial machine gun. While it's well armoured enough to shrug off any small arms fire that doesn't get into the open topped turret, I have plenty of bazookas, rifle grenades and satchel charges with my airborne, which will make short work of it, so I'm not very worried. What I should have taken from the arrival of the 222 is the possibility of more enemy infantry arriving as well. After lurking in the field for a few turns, the armoured car moves up towards the far left, along with what looks like it might be a fresh infantry squad. A little later, my scouts on the objective hedgerow and in the barns come under a deluge of fire from what looks like three tripod-mounted MG42s across the final field. This is a lot of firepower, and with more spots rapidly appearing, it's pretty obvious that the enemy counterattack is making its presence felt. What's just as obvious is that I've dropped the ball here. The 75s are still falling as I work out what's going on, and they're stopping my right hand platoon for getting on the flank of the objective and now of that counterattack. The bunker had already been knocked out, there weren't any enemy forces around it, I started dropping artillery on it because I could, and then never really considered stopping it. Without the 75s being in the way, I could easily have had a platoon up on the road engaging the Germans as they ran across the field on the left. So well done me. This screw up puts a lot of pressure on my far left, but ultimately the Germans are making a frontal assault here and they suffer accordingly. The 222 never gets into action, I'm able to move a bazooka up and take it out, and despite being late to the party, my platoon on the right is able to get into an effective flanking position once the 75s have expended their ammunition, and they catch the enemy pinned down in the open and enfilade them as they stack up on the hedgerows and inside the objective. It's not completely smooth sailing, there are casualties here and there, but once I've gotten some mortars onto the concentration of Germans, they're as good as dead. I am running out of time though, and with more points for occupying the objective and killing the enemy, I need to clear them out. The main sticking point is a squad stacked up along a high wall, which is managing to hang on despite the enfilade, so I decide to deal with them in the most spectacular Hollywood way I can think of. An airborne assault team blasts their way through the wall directly on top of them, and quickly scatters or kills them. In the ensuing smoke and confusion, they take a couple of casualties to a very angry German platoon leader with an MP40, who is presumably upset that all his men are dead, and they fall back. But after a minute of overtime, the enemy surrenders. It's a total victory once again, though I did lose out on the bonus points for keeping my casualties down. I lost a total of 20 men, 7 dead and 13 wounded, mostly breaking into the right of the start and holding off the Germans on the far left at the end. The enemy has suffered much, much worse. He only has 9 men still standing and has lost 56 dead and 33 wounded, as well as having an armoured vehicle, the 2C2, taken out and had 4 men taken prisoner. Overall, the plan worked pretty well. Punching right was a risk, but it was a manageable one that ultimately paid off, even if it didn't reach its full potential due to my misjudgement with the artillery. In any case, I wanted to get an attack under smoke in, seeing as though I was going to do that back on Auction Hill, and I didn't. So, we've gotten the Germans' attention over here and sucked their local reserves in, meaning that the 325th will have a slightly easier time cracking the ham itself in the next mission, and, having had a quick look at that one, they're probably going to need all the help they can get. That is going to have to wait a little while, though. This mission is the last in Part 3 of the Road to Monteberg, I'm going to change tack a little and get some multiplayer Shock Force 2 in for a little while to break things up a bit before we get back for the assault on the ham and then, I assume, switch back to the curiously absent 8th Infantry for the final three missions. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll catch you in the next one.